I always respected that, man. And I always respected and loved the people that believed in me um, when other people, you know, maybe didn't or thought that I was crazy. And so, you know, for me, you know, you talked about my grandmother. She was always that person for me, man, whether it was, you know, playing baseball. Like, if we were down by 10 runs, like, I never believed in losing. Like, I, I didn't believe we were going to lose. Welcome back, everybody, to Trade Talk. My name is Trey Tipton, and today I got a special guest. And if you watch and pay attention, you know this guy, you love this guy, and you probably want to know a little bit more about this guy. I got my main man, Brian Hess, today on Trade Talk, man. And if you don't know what Trade Talk is, then you better find out. And if you already knew, tell somebody else. Help us out. So with that said, man, welcome, Brian. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, brother. Good to be here, man. Man, I got some questions for you, Brian. Let's some do. real deal, holy field questions. Let's and it's it. about things that you now put me a part of that I can say that I do love and enjoy. Um, for those of you who don't know, who watch the show and enjoy the show, my man Brian has created this place, right? And I call it this place because it seems like it's a myth. Like it doesn't seem real until you actually pull up. So it's called TCS, Top Contractor School, man. And this space is a space where these contractors come together and genuinely love on each other, right? and also get information to help each other out. But let's talk about the origin story of that a little bit. Where did TCS, where did this idea come from? Like, I'm actually curious to find out. Yeah, so um, 2018, when we started the payment group, you know, I had been, like, helping out other sales teams, things like that, like, you know, coaching, training, mentoring different companies across the country for a few years. Uh, but there was always something missing, you know. It was like there wasn't uh, the community or connection aspect to – anything that that I experienced in construction like there were there were people that were you know sharing information trying to advise companies things like that but I had been you know part of other things that were just a little bit more community uh, based meaning like you know there were events there were people getting together there were uh, people you know online sharing a much more detailed amount of information than right. uh, what I was experiencing anywhere in the construction industry. And I worked for companies that had, you know, uh, advisors, um, you know, working with them and trying to get the information that, that they needed, you know, because a lot of contractors don't have the right information to be able to get their businesses to the next level. And so through all that, I was like, man, there's got to be something more. There's got to be a better way to do this then, you know, back in the old days, they would, you know, anybody would fly to a business, right, right. you'd be paying all these travel expenses. And, you know, frankly, the companies that needed the help didn't always have that kind of money. Like it was like 10 grand for somebody to even come and look at your business to see if they could help you. Right. And I was around so many smaller contractors that like they needed help, but they didn't have, you know, if they needed the help, they probably didn't have the $10,000 to even get started. Right. And so I thought, like, man, there's got to be a way to do this online via Zoom, et cetera, where we can, you know, have the best of both worlds, get people the information and it not cost that amount of money. And then to really create a community aspect around that to, you know, get people to know each other better, uh, you know, kind of create that contractor connection that yeah. everybody I felt was looking for and really couldn't find. And I can say that it's definitely like a like a fraternity or like a sorority because there's females within it as well because you see these people get together, but they live and die by each other. And I feel like that's a really beautiful thing. So I want to tap into that a little bit. You have been known to say on a couple different podcasts that being a part of this TCS group has become like your ministry. Can you explain that a little bit, express to the people on, on what that makes you feel? Yeah, I, I think, you know, everybody, you know, kind of finds their tribe, as they say, right. you know, and, and for us, you know, anybody that's been part of TCS, it's why it's so hard to really explain it, because it comes off probably different than what it actually is. You right. know, like when you get in the room and you, you hear a lot of people saying like, man, you can feel the love or it feels like a big hug, like it kind of feels or maybe sounds weird to people, right. uh, it, it's not weird at all. You know, anybody that walks in there doesn't feel like, oh, man, this is real strange. Like, it's just a bunch of normal, you know, guys and girls that are, you know, running businesses that are trying to make a difference in each other's lives. And, like, at the foundation of, you know, the word ministry, like, that's really what it is. It's like, you know, how do you, how do you bring a group of people together? How do you share, you know, right. like-minded, like-hearted beliefs and values and principles and, you know, that's really what it is. It's like my ability uh, to give back to this world is really highlighted through TCS. Like 
and not in what I do directly anymore. It's more about, you know, what we've created in this community and the depths of the people that want to do the same thing. You know, right. like I tell this story about when we when we first launched the Inner Circle, I interviewed 16 companies uh, to be part of it, 13 of which we selected. And out of those 13, out of those 16 companies, all 16 said to me uh, that they wanted to give to an organization, not just take from it. Okay. And they all mentioned something to me about their faith, which mm. I, th I found was, you know, ironic. It was like, it's not something that we put front and center, ev you know, ever. Like, we're not, you know, trying to lead with that necessarily, but we've attracted that foundation of faith into the group. And uh, we've also attracted those same values that people mentioned, which was, you know, people want to be able to give to something, not just take from it. And, you know, there's so many people out there and the contractors that are out there, whether you're building homes, paving parking lots, run an electrical line, whatever, whatever it may be, there's something you've learned along the way that you'd love to pay forward to somebody else. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you get a group of people in a room like that, it feels a lot like ministry, man, because right. it feels like church. It 100%. feels like home. It feels like, you know, that that idea that like, Again, it sounds cheesy, but like you don't have to do this alone, man. Right. Like you don't have to do it alone, and you don't. This isn't some like you know. I use these words at the retreat, but I'll say it again. It's not some like foo foo mushy group. It's just a bunch of dudes that really care about each other, right. guys and girls that really care about each other, that take care of each other, that look out for each other, that motivate each other, that drive each other. It's like, and it's a pretty competitive group too, man. Like extremely, you know, you're not gonna get in the room and like. Everybody just say like, oh, Trey, let me take care of you. Like, you know, it's a group of real good friends, not feel good friends. Like they're right. going to tell you the truth. They're going to tell you, you know, when you're screwing up, they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to hold you to the values of the group. Right. And uh, that is what creates the ability for people to level up. And so, you know, from the standpoint of, of saying that it's it's my ministry, it's like it's it's the ability to impact people, to impact souls, families in a positive way. And uh, it's. You know, professionally, man, it's the thing that fills me up the most wow. is to get in that room and like see the difference that we're making, you wow. know, see the difference that that group is making, not just in businesses, but in families. And, you know, people talked a lot. You know, there were three babies. One didn't make the trip because they got some travel issues, but there were supposed to be four babies under the age of three or four months that were at the retreat. And it's been a consistent comment since the retreat, like that people feel confident enough to bring their families That's around. Right. And that that is, in my opinion, the greatest compliment you could ever be paid as an organization is like, I want my family to see this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's not always the case. You know, you got all kinds of different organizations out there. Uh, some are more intense. Some might use language that's not acceptable for kids. Some might, you know, right. there's to each their own. But this organization is one that uh, is built to improve the family. It's not to improve a business. It's to per improve the whole person, the whole family, the whole organization, not just the leader. But how we impact the leaders of those organizations is how those organizations improve. And see, that's amazing to me because I have a little, just a very little bit of experience with doing a peer-to-peer -peer group and whatnot or what I did in college. So for me, when I built that group, man, it definitely took a toll on me, right? Like, because as much as I thought I was helping out people, it was actually helping me. So in what ways has this group helped you personally? Oh, dude, in, in, in every way. I mean, you know, when you look at the quality of people that are in that group, um, you know, you, you don't sit sit back and you know, hope that you still maintain that leadership position, right. you know, both from a business standpoint and from a, you know, personal development standpoint, like, you know, number one, I would just say to anybody, like, the more that you teach, the more that you understand a topic, right? So like, you know, when I am educating people week to week on whatever topic it may be in business, you know, marketing, sales, leadership, operations, finance, etc., like it takes a lot of preparation to be able to do that. And so in turn, your own business gets better naturally right. just from being the teacher, you know, from, you know, leading and delivering that content and curriculum makes a huge difference. Uh, the other part is you're just around a lot of great people, you know, whether it's, um, 
you know, watching Carla go through, you know, business challenges and how she handles all of that in stride and, you know, and deals with it. And, you know, there's people in there that have been in business a lot longer than I have. Right. And so watching the way that they deal with those things, or even maybe better than that, watching those people who've been at it a lot longer than me be so coachable that they take the newest information and implement it so well. Um, the group in general, man, has impacted my life. Like, you know, I've got people at my house for, for New Year's Eve, for Thanksgiving, for, you know, it literally has become family. And then on the business side, you know, you really feel, and anybody that's part of the group will tell you this, you really feel like like you, you best keep a move on mm. uh, from a, a, a growth standpoint because, you know, it's, it's a race right. for lack of a better description. Like, you know, there's people that are really putting some serious performance up mm -hmm. uh, from a business standpoint. And so, you know, wanting to be that person that uh, continues to be the leader, continues to innovate, continues to lead the way so that other people can be inspired by what it is that we're doing. You know, I'm not sure that that same feeling would be there without a community of people pushing you and reminding you of what it is that you're supposed to be doing nonstop. And that's, you know, what I tell people about the calls every week. You may not learn something brand new on those calls every week. Might be something you already know. But you're going to be reminded of what greatness looks like, mm. you know, of what you should be doing as a leader, what you should be doing as a parent, what you should be doing as a man, what you should be doing as a woman, like you're going to be reminded of what that's supposed to look like. You're going to you're going to be reminded also through other people's challenges from time to time of like what happens if you don't do X. Right. And and then what you get to deal with as a result of that. And so to me there's nothing more powerful to drive an individual business than that community aspect because you get to look at you know, 40 something other companies and see what's going well, what's challenging, uh, how are they recruiting new people? What are the, you know, what are the things that they're doing that are different than you? You know, mm -hmm. there's been some people in the group that have innovated different areas that we have adopted as a business. And so that helps us multiply without having to do the trial and error of right. what works and what doesn't. Right. And not to me, Brian, I ain't going to lie to you. I could see it over and over again as you go through it. You could tell you genuinely love the people that are involved into this group, man. And you don't just bring anybody into your family, you understand? So when you go to these spaces, man, it's like a family reunion because all your friends, all the people that you consider brothers and sisters are now in one space. So with that said, man, since you've been a part of this thing right here, man, like how have you seen the biggest differences between TCS and other peer-led groups? Well, I, I think, you know, when you hear us talk about TCS, like there's a there's a unique tone to what we say and how we say it. And, right. you know, you don't you don't often hear that that idea of like a family feel. It's more like, you know, it's the difference in the education system. Like what kind of education do you prefer? Like how do you how do you want to be educated? Like right. do you want to have, you know, some flexibility to how you learn or do you want to sit in a classroom? And so, <laughs> you know, to me, it's we've built the most powerful group of contractors that I've seen from the standpoint that like we start from the inside out like you know we start with caring about the person like what is going on with this person personally it, it it's not easy man to like do all this to juggle all this to have you know life's normal challenges right. in addition to having the weight of the world of a business on your shoulders and so when you think about what drive somebody to join a group in the first place. It's like, what do you need? What do you look for? What do you, it's, it's no different than choosing anything that you're part of, choosing a church. Like right. it has to identify with you. You know, there probably are people that would walk in this room and it wouldn't feel right to them. Right. You know, like it's like, nah, this really isn't my style. I'm more of a, you know, super intense. I want somebody to yell at me. Like that's not going to happen here. Right. right. You know, it's more of, finding that ability to be around now what i would say is this group has such a dynamic background of like experiences what people have been through first generation second generation third generation businesses right. so like every aspect of what you could possibly go through as a business owner um it's in this room right 
And so what we've been able to create, in my opinion, is the most diverse and dynamic group of experienced contractors, meaning right. like what they've been through, where, what they have done, what they've actually accomplished, and I believe also what makes us unique. And I'm, I, there's other groups out there that probably have the same thing, but like everyone that's part of this organization is currently running a business. Mm. Like we're not just advising businesses, like we're out there doing it and doing it at a high level and doing it successfully and growing exponentially, scaling at a high level. That to me is what makes it unique because we're living in it the same way as the people that we're teaching are. You know, cool. it's not something that uh, we have a manual of how to do this and we're delivering that information. Like we're living it. And so, and that's not a knock on the people that don't. It's just like there's a difference, man, because the information is being proven in real time, right? You know, or disproven in real time through the tests of our own businesses. And collectively, you've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue in that group where the marketing methods that we use are being tested every day. Mm. Are they converting or are they not? Right. And like we get that feedback instantaneously. Like right. we don't have to read the next book that's coming out to figure out what's working in marketing. And, you know, it's not the same if you're not running a business. It's just not. Like mm. you can't duplicate real world experience. And that to me um, is there's many things that make it different, but that's one of the major things that uh, stands out is that we're proving over and over and over again, the advice and mentorship that we give is correct right. through the success of the businesses that we have, it's right? Proof, they say men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Never. So like if we've got the results to back it up, then what else do you have to say? No, nah, you guys have a lot of results. I ain't going to lie. I know a lot of guys haven't had the opportunity to really showcase their testimony. But when you hear the testimonies, you're like, wow, like, OK, these are making not just like emotional changes. We're talking financial changes, which end up being a family change. Right. So that is something that is very important to me. But I feel like they also got to get to know the guy that is at the helm of all this. Right. Brian Hess is from Uniontown, PA. Grew up playing baseball. Yeah, you know I mean, was a competitive ass kid, as I could tell. You know what I mean? But that came Still with a competitive kid. Hey, competitive as hell. I seen it, man. I seen it. But there's a side of you, man, where you genuinely care about people. And you talk a little bit about your grandmother. You talk a little bit about the people around you who helped you, right? But where did this side of you come that you're able to compete, but you're also able to be a really good friend, to have a big heart, to also be able to be the guy that you need to be, right? Like, there's no pushing you over, that's for damn sure. But you also have a big enough heart that you're reasonable, you're understanding, and you're patient. Where does this come from? I think it I think it definitely comes from, you know, what what you learn as a kid, what right. you see as you're growing up. Um, you know, and for me, you know, my favorite people in the world were always the helpers. Mm. And, you know, it, when when you're a kid, you know, there's those people that, you know, take the time to give you feedback. You know, I I can think back to um a coach when I played like little league, like I don't remember whether it was T-ball or like the next level up. This coach like you know, always had it out for me as a player, right? Like, right. you know, but then when he got to, to have a travel team, you know, came and selected me as one of those players. And he was a great example of like, you know, being a helper, like right. telling me not just how great I was as a kid, like playing at a high level, but like what I could do better. Mm. And uh, I always respected that, man. And I always respected and loved the people that believed in me um, when other people, you know, maybe didn't or thought that I was crazy. And so, you know, for me, you know, you talked about my grandmother, but she was always that person for me, man, whether it was, you know, playing baseball, like if we were down by 10 runs, like I never believed in losing, like I, I didn't mm. believe we were going to lose. And I don't think that a lot of people related to that in me, uh, especially as a child, but she did, right. you know, she always encouraged the crazy ideas that I had, you know, it was like, and I think back to that, it's like, man, you know, I think about my grandmother's life and like, you know, how she was living, you know, she worked for PennDOT and she went to work every day and my grandfather worked for Columbia Gas. And like, I just think back to like, now I put myself as an eight year old little boy or a nine year old little boy, 10 year old little boy, like all the crazy things that I was saying, doing from the time I was five years old, up, right. like, you know, big right. dreams and big, you know, all these outlandish stories of what I was going to do in my life. And like, I think like, man, their lens of the world was, you know, f fairly narrow, right. right? Of like, you know, being from Uniontown, my grandmother grew up in Brownsville, 
And so, you know, you're from a small town. You know, going to Pittsburgh when I was a kid was a big deal. Right. It, was a, it was a trip, right? That it's was crazy. like a treat, you know? And, and so I think back, like, man, God blessed me so much with that woman, man, to, like, have somebody that, even though maybe her lens wasn't so wide, um, she believed in me. Right. And, like, so for me now, uh, TCS is a way for me to be that person for other people, you Ooh. know, that, that makes their crazy ideas seem realistic mm. or fans the flames of their excitement in their life because – I think, you know, far too many people sell themselves short in the world because they don't have that person to believe in them. And, you know, so for me, uh, you know, bringing Vinny in here and doing the art show or, you know, hiring you saying, like, the heck am I going to do with this football? <laughs> but it's like if you believe in people, man, you'll be pleasantly surprised by what happens when you do mm. because people are capable. Anybody out there is capable of so much. Right. And all we need sometimes is that person to be like, I got you, man. Like, I got you. I don't believe you're crazy. I believe you have a great idea, and you should pursue it, and I'm here to bounce ideas off of. Sometimes that's all you need, man. And when you get multiple people like that together, and so that's what we've built with TCS, right. where every, like, dude, if you if you didn't believe in somebody's idea and there wasn't a damn good reason behind it, you'd mm. probably be asked to leave TCS. Not 100%. by me, by the whole group, man, because it's just not how we roll. And that all I believe started with, you know, people that believed in Keith Jr., people that believed in me, people that believed in Daniel Good, people that believe, you know, the key right. players in in TCS, you know, Carla's father uh, believing in her enough to hand her the you keys, know, the keys to that business, you know, to a, you know, now it's a fifty-something-year-old business. That's special, man. Right. And so, our uh, the responsibility that we feel as an organization, as the the board of TCS, it's like. How do we pay that forward to other people? You know, mm. how do we create an environment where uh, it's almost like a contractor incubator, where you bring your ideas, they get multiplied by the people in the room, they right. don't get told that you can't do it, and that is, in my opinion, it's it's a big thing that's missing in construction. You know, you go into any contractor uh, Facebook group, right. and all you see is a bunch of people, you know, criticizing each other. Yeah. Like, dude, we don't need any more of that in the world. What we need in this world is people that believe in other people's dreams, believe in other people's aspirations. And, you know, listen, man, you, you can't just be crazy. Like, you, you got to have some plan to it. You got to tell people the truth when right. their idea sucks. But, like, there's, I see a lot of people's ideas that are good, that have potential, that, you know, get poo-pooed by somebody because nobody believes in them. Right. And so for me... You know, most of my life, man, my grandmother, you know, was there to believe in me. But, like, there was nobody to get that idea off the ground for me. Like, the the resources, the finances, the, you know, how do I do it? Where do I go, you know, right. to get the money, to get the resources, to, to take the dream to the next level? And I, I believe this organization is that for people. So, like, you know, if you're looking for that, if you're looking to be part of something that is positive, that is going to encourage you, and by the way, also has the receipts to prove what we're talking about. Like, right. you know, we've got hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue success. That's not boasting or bragging. It's just a fact. And like, you want to learn from, this is my experience. You want to learn from the people who have done it, mm. not the people who are telling you what to do, but the people who have done it and continue to do it because that's where the best information is going to come right. from. And when that's surrounded by people that are going to believe in your hopes and your dreams uh, they're going to focus on, you know, making you a better man, a better woman, a better father, mother, and business owner. There's just nowhere else I'd rather be, man. And you could tell, man, you could tell that you have an extreme passion for these people and what you're doing within this this realm of things that you're doing. So with that said, I'm sure there was a time period where Brian Hess didn't believe in Brian Hess. But now you're in a period where, like, there's no question of whether or not you believe in anything and everything that you could do. And I'll leave you with this last question because I know you're a busy man. I'm not trying to keep you long. You're my dog, so I understand how you move now. But with that said, man, at that point in time when you didn't believe in yourself, when did it click for you? Dude, I think you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired <laughs> at some point. Say that again, Brian, because I don't know, you know if they heard you in the back. <laughs> you, you, you just get... You get tired of being tired. You get tired of telling yourself the same excuses. Right. You get tired of, you know, making up 
reasons why something's not your fault, you know, like, and everybody's been there. I don't, I don't know a single person that hasn't been to that level where they're like, you know, I know I'm making excuses, but I'm going to keep making them. And like right. momentarily, you know, I always say this to people. It's like taking Vicodin for a broken leg, bro. Your, your, <laughs> your leg's not healing from your excuses. If it makes you feel better temporarily, hey, have at it. Right. But like, right. you know, don't don't bullshit yourself, mm. right? You know, mm. because uh, I tell this to salespeople all the time, like nothing more dangerous in the world than believe in your own bullshit, right? That's a fact. And so at some point, you just get sick and tired of sick, being sick and tired, and you figure out that the common denominator in all the challenges are you and your decision making, right? It's like, so like all the times that I told myself, like, it wasn't me, you know, man, why am I so unlucky? You know, right. like all, right. all the things, like, we've all been there. Shoot, dude, I still go through it sometimes to this day, right? right. Where I'm like, am I making excuses for myself? Like, but the difference is I catch it. Right. And I don't continue to do it now. And like at some point, man, you just figure out like it's really a you versus you game that you're playing. And like the minute that you can get you out of your way, mm. the rest is a lot easier. Come on. Uh, and if you can get you out of your way, and this is what I find, by the way, in contractors, too. There's so many people that tell me that I like they'll talk to me about TCS. I know it's a perfect fit for them, but they can't get their ego out of the way Ooh. to get in the room. Come on. And like, dude, it's, it's, trust me, man. Like it's easier than you think, dude. Like, and it's not about, you know, because people feel like an outsider, like, man, I don't want to go in there because I don't know anybody or I don't trust me, man. It doesn't you, the first time you walked in the room, did you feel like a stranger? Not even, close. not even close. And like, nobody's judging you for the size of your business or what you got going on or whatever. But I will tell you this, like, if you if you want to step up in there, if you feel like it's a good fit for you, just be prepared for people to really care. Like mm. meaning, like they're not going to tell you all just the good stuff. Right. They will tell you the good stuff, but they're going to tell you the other stuff too. And you know, so the first thing you got to do is believe in yourself. The first thing you got to do is get out of your own way. And like for me, man, when I got out of my own way, like the path became clear of like, okay, now that I'm not the issue. I can focus on surrounding myself with the right people, right. the right resources, the right values, the right principles, and then I can work my ass off. And the next thing you know, you have a pretty successful business. Come on. And so it, it really is the first step of like getting sick and tired of dealing with yourself selling you short. And so once you figure that out, once you get all that in alignment, man, the rest of it, you know, that's pushing the rock up the hill. Once you get to that point, man, it's like the rock tips over the top of the hill and you start sliding down the other side. You gain some momentum. Right. And the next thing you know, man, you know, you're surrounded by a lot of great people. Your life feels more full. You don't feel so, you know, like you're on this journey by yourself. And uh, business becomes fun, man. Like I say this all the time, but like I can't believe I get paid to do this shit. Like I, I – <laughs> I can't believe it because I love our customers. I love our employees. I love the contractors we get to work with. Um, I even love at this point, man, I love the challenges because it makes it fresh. You know, mm. it, it makes, it means that we're testing the business. We're testing the processes. We're testing the systems. And so that excites me because I know that on the other side of adversity, there's a new, there's a new day, mm. you know, there's a new version of this company. There's a new version of the people that work here. Because, you know, problems are meant to show us what we're not good at Come on. And, and what we can get better at. And so when we do that, we get out of our own way, we check our ego, we get in the room, and we get the knowledge uh, or we give the knowledge that right. we have to somebody else. It's just impossible not to have a fuller cup than you did before. And I love that, man. And Brian, we're going to let you go here because I know you got to get back to a couple meetings in a day. I also got a meeting myself, but I will say this, man. The one key thing that I think that I picked up from you the most was the importance of community. You know what I mean? Because if we look at life, right, as if it was our own hand, if I hit somebody like this, it's going to be painful, right? But when you bring it together, this is a very strong place to be at, right? We're always stronger together than we are apart. Nothing always. great's ever been done alone, bro. Come on. What's the, what's the proverb that you love? 
If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Come on. And me and Brian like to drive fast, so get ready. You know what I mean? Because, hey, we get in there fast. So I'll say this, man. We'll leave you with this. If you haven't heard them, make sure you open your ears, man. Find you a community that's like this community because there's no other community like I've ever been in that has been like this. And if you're out there and you feel lonely, we're here to catch you. We're here to love on you. And if you don't believe that it's us, find somebody who it might be. Amen. But other than that, man, this has been Trade Talk. And a please, 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 if you don't know, now you know. And if you knew, you better tell somebody else because we need you to like, subscribe, care to comment. We would love for you to do that. Everything in between. This is Trey Tipton. I'm with my man, Brian Hess. And we love you, man. See ya.